They're, they're as deeply rooted in biology as the dominance hierarchy is rooted in biology. And we already know the answer to that. The dominance hierarchy has been around for 350 million years. It's a long time. You don't get to just brush that off and say, well, morality is some sort of second-order cognitive problem. It's like, no, it's not. I mean, I can, t I can tell you something about its instantiation in your nervous system. You have a counter at the bottom of your brain that keeps track of where you are in terms of your status, and it bloody well regulates the sensitivity of your emotions. So if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy, barely clinging on to the world, everything overwhelms you, and that's because you're damn near dead. And so everything should overwhelm you. You've got no extra resources. Any more threat, you're sunk. So you become extremely sensitive to negative emotion and maybe also impulsive so that you grab while the grabbing's good. And if you're nearer the top in the dominance hierarchy and your counter tells you that, then your serotonin levels go up, you're less sensitive to negative emotion, you're less impulsive, you live longer, like Everything works in your favor. Your immune system functions better, and you're oriented at least to some degree towards the medium and long-term future. And you can afford that, because all hell isn't breaking loose around you all the time. And so then the question is, is there a way of being that increases the probability that you're going to move up dominance hierarchies? Well, that doesn't seem to be a particularly provocative proposition, unless you think that it's completely arbitrary and random, and that... You can think that if you want, but I don't think there's any evidence for that whatsoever. I mean, we certainly have, even for sexual selection, we impose criteria. They're not ram random and arbitrary. So, 